gentlemen, this is our next bout of the evening set for 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Flyweight Championship of the World. Damas y caballeros, este combate pactado a 12 asaltos por el Campeonato Mundial Peso Mosca de la FIB. Once again, being brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino Tecate. Cerveza con carácter and affliction. Supervising, Supervisor David McCullough. The judges are, los jueces son, Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, y Michael Pernick. El referee. Fair but firm, Joe Cortez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presentando en la esquina azul. Sube el cuadrilátero vestido de blanco con rojo y verde. He steps into the ring wearing white trimmed in red and green. Su peso oficial, 111 libras. His official weight, 111 pounds. Su record profesional. 22 victorias con solo una derrota y 15 de sus victorias a través de knockout his professional record 22 victories with one lone defeat and 15 of his victories coming by way of knockout fighting out of durban republic of south africa moruti baby face Talane. His opponent in the red corner, su rival en la esquina roja. He steps into the ring wearing white trimmed in red. Sube el cuadrilátero vestido de blanco con color rojo. Detuvo la báscula un peso oficial de 112 libras. He tipped the scales at an official 112 pounds. Su record profesional, 19 victorias con solo una derrota y 12 de sus victorias a través de knockout as a professional. He has 19 victories with one lone defeat and 12 of those victories coming by way of knockout. Defending his IBF flyweight championship of the world. From General Santos City, the Philippines, the Filipino flash, Nonito Donner. All right, gentlemen, we've all the rules in the dressing room. Trunks here are high. Punches here are still good. Open a good, clean fight. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Good IBF luck. Flyweight Championship on the line. Right. And no wonder Donaire's ability to reflect and get away from oh. the shots. Are yeah, right. well, no wonder he's on his, you know, he's, he's airing out his aggression yeah. here because I know who the Stone Cold boss of the family is. Well, I don't know. That's what I'm telling you. He must be, he must be trying to avoid those roundhouse kicks. There you go. <laughs> But no, he's a, they're both real nice people. They're really respectful. Uh, Daniel is actually in here doing his job. And actually, Delaney is actually imposing a little bit more in this fight. Yeah. Well, he Donaire. loosened up in the last round. And in fact, our copy box numbers show that he out, he doubled uh, Donaire's punch output last year, uh, last round, 18 to 9. So would you give that? I would probably I give him that him, round. I gave yeah. him the last round, yeah. And then Delaney trying to stand and... Make a little bit of a war, but now he's getting on a jab really wild with the right hand. How technically sound is uh, Delaney to you? Technically, he needs a little more work, but uh, defensively, he's he's pretty good. His guard is up very well. He'll slip a shot here and there, but I would like to see a little bit more of that. Uh, I would like to also see him counter punch more. Something and, he's not doing at and all. And the criticism you have of Donaire starts with that drop left hand, doesn't it? Correct. And let me uh, just clarify that, that last round I said 18 to 9, not just the output, but he doubled the connects on him 18 to 9. Uh, that's, I mean, the that's punches the key. Yeah. Donaire squares up in front, and Enthalani, and out of crowd, getting a little not upset. They just want more action. Maybe they want more out of Donaire, the champion. But you know, they, they gotta understand that you know you got a, a, a fighter in front of you who's strong, who's taking some pretty good shots, and it's not gonna give his victory away. And Talani, by the way, became the number one contender. He's the mandatory challenger. Uh, Donaire is fulfilling his mandatory tonight. 
and he got there, M. Kalani, by defeating Hussein Hussein in a 12-round bout. Right. So he did beat a quality fighter to Absolutely. get here. Absolutely. That was... That's what got him here. Now he's looking to make the next move. And, you know, he's not a stepping stone name for our Donair. He's uh, the number one contender who actually claimed, you know, he claimed his spot. Yes. Boy, Donair, a little flat-footed, but perhaps thinking about plan B to box a little bit, and get on that jab, create some movement and angles, but... He's content to the stand in front of the South African, and Emtalani's been a little bit busier. There, Donair sinks a right hand to the body, letting his hands go, but he's been very economical, the champion, not wasting anything. And his punch output, as Rich alluded to, is on the low side. Nonito's kind of abandoned his jab. He's got to get back to work with that. Yeah, I was thinking he'd start to box it. Not a great round for the champion here. Closing the fifth. Well, the fans are booing, but let no. me just use some bad grammar. This is getting interestinger and interestinger <laughs> in terms of the closeness and competitiveness of the fight. You get hit a lot of jabs, Johnny. Relax, relax. Relax. He's getting marked up now. You're losing the run. You're losing the run. Relax. Slip it. Melanie. Six out. There you see it. Good one, good one, good one. Get in, throw your punches. Relax. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. Pepper Mula. Stay with you. Judges for this two from Nevada, the very experienced Adelaide Bird, Robert Hoyle, and in from Florida, Michael Karnick. An exceptionally experienced world-class judge as well. As we hit the sixth and approach the halfway mark in a very competitive title fight. Yeah, and then there comes out fighting as a softball. Yeah. I don't know what they saw to try to convince them to, to start off, and it, I, I guess that's just to confuse them. If he hasn't been able to do anything. Yeah, that right hand, that left hand landed. He is just trying to line him up for that left. The jab's doing nothing. And the good right hand that uh, Magdalena actually landed as well. Yeah. And I think he has a cut on that left eye. And as Rich Magdalena said, that uh, Donaire's roughed up a little bit too. Well yeah, on the temple. He's bruising both above and below the eye. There's a mouse developing under his right eye and he's scratched above it. Yeah, Medellini has a ton in, I'm, th I'm thinking it's on the side of the nose somewhere. Well, look at that. Again, interesting. Remember, the champion's just, again, he's trying to set up that power left hand. That's the one punch that knocked out Garcinian from the orthodox stance, of course. The point is, we know he has power. Now he's back orthodox in both hands. Yeah, now he switched again. Boy, Mthalani's been... Ineffective halfway through this round, he's done nothing. Oh, time! Time! Hey, get in that corner. Come here, come here. Come here. Looks like it's... Get in that corner. Well, that's a stop because it's his eyelid, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Eyelid, look at it. That's it, it's that's it. it. That's it. It's over. Well, you picked it up, Rich. We didn't know it was that bad. And you heard the doctor say you got to stop it. It's his eyelid. Well, you know, inside physician referee Joe Cortez stops the bout due to a severe laceration over the left eye of the blue corner. Damas caballeros, después de consultar con el médico de turno, el referee Joe Cortez para la contienda por causa de una lesión sobre el ojo izquierdo de la esquina azul. El tiempo oficial, un minuto, 31 segundos del sexto asalto. The official time, one minute, 31 seconds of round number six. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, and still the IBF flyweight champion of the world, Nonito, the Filipino Flash
able to flex their muscles and bra and <laughs> Brian is ready to take us into our next fight. John Real Casimero versus Marutim Talane. No. All right, uh, now uh, we're going to take a closer look at uh, the two boxes that are coming up. IBF World Championship, this the tail of the tape. Uh, the visitor being uh, younger than the world champion, uh, but he also, uh, wow, takes uh, takes um, advantage in terms of height a little bit. But we'll see how that pans out in the ring, but it seems pretty close in terms of height and reach. Uh, Dalana, obviously being older, is the more experienced boxer, but I can tell you now, John Rio Casimero is a dangerous boxer. Well, Nick Duran did say that he's no slouch. He's watched a few fights of his. And tonight, yeah, we'll see what he is likely to do as we take it to Brian Mulder for the last time. All right, so this bout is another international affair. It's the IBF flyweight bout, and it's scheduled for 12 rounds. So let's first bring the boxers into the ring before we do the formal introductions once again. Firstly, let's welcome the challenger all the way from the Philippines, John Real. Casimero. Well, the Philippines, that's a Filipino flag. John Real Casimero. The Filipino boxers are known as dangerous boxers. As they have a fight, they fight every week in the Philippines. As Casimero and his team make their way to the ring with the uh, Filipino flag. Very proud nations, the Filipinos. And of course, he needs no introduction because he is the champion, Maruti Amtalane. So Maruti Amtalane, maturing like fine wine. There you go. We're looking forward to seeing what Maruti Dalane has in store for South Africa tonight. The last fight was against uh, Zolani Tete. Very tough five rounds indeed. Tell you one thing, this fight is not not going to be easy. All right, let's do your judges for you right now. Your judges hail from, first of all, from Canada, it's Alan Davis. From the USA, the lovely lady Valerie Dawson. And our very own South African Simon Klamjashi makes up the three judges. Your referee definitely for this particular fight is a man who hails from New Jersey. It's Earl Morton. Introducing the principles to you right now. He's fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the light and blue trunks. He weighed in at 50.52 kilograms. He's had 15 fights. He's won 14 of them, eight by knockouts, one loss. Let's make him feel nice, warm, and welcome in South Africa. He hails from the Philippines. John Real Casimero. His opponent. He is wearing the almighty red trunks. He weighed in at 50.76 kilograms. He's had 28 fights. 
26 wins, 17 by knockout. He's lost two. Please, let's make him feel like the man he is. He is Moruti, baby face, Amtalane. I expect you to be able to protect yourself and give me a good clean play. Touch gloves and good luck. Touch gloves. Good luck. Well, that's a voice of one Earl Morton. Earl Morton, a referee here tonight. The man who was uh, removed from a fight between Bernard Hopkins and uh -uh. Kelly Public because somebody had told the public corner that uh, Earl Morton was a good friend of Bernard Hopkins and no, the New Jersey state athletic commission removed him from Yo, that go. fight but later wow. after investigation they found him not guilty and tonight he's standing here between these two pugilists young men very short both of them fighting in the flyweight division john real casimero from the philippines I'm a youthful I'm looking one I'm glad they didn't find him guilty. He can't be, he can't be guilty of being somebody's friend. <laughs> well, they thought he was going to influence the fight too. <laughs> In Bernard Hopkins' favor. Uh, tell you something else about Earl Morton. He was also the advisor to the making of the film about Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward, the Irish fighter, the fighter. Well, Takalani will have to find this young man. He's all over the ring. Or rather, Muruti. Big punches there from Casimero. Muruti has that crouching star. He's going to be good fodder for Casimero. Muruti takes his time try and weigh his man down very little changes to the referee one referee one judge edit to the judges so, so come large is a South African judge the other judges Alan Davis is still here with us at ringside well, and Dorset. yeah Marutin Dallan is trying to close the gap at this point Dalani now taking the fight to the Filipino by the Filipino comes back with a big punch. No, the, the Filipino does throw some mean punches. One of the other things about the Filipino is his movements. He's quite upright. Uh, I'm not necessarily comfortable with his coordination in terms of movement, but he throws hard punches, that's for sure. Right to the body. That is for sure. So Casimero obviously getting an opportunity to fight for a world championship. It couldn't be a slouch. He's here to show what he's made of. No doubt to talk about this man, Boruti. Takes his time to weigh his man down. Clash of heads there. Uh, Dallan is trying to establish his jab. And uh, Casimero quite happy to to counter as Ndalane comes in to engage. Casimero only 14 fights to his name. There you go, uh, Morutum Ndalane. I did say that Morutum Ndalane cannot be flat-footed in this fight. He's going to have to move. That's the end of round one. Welcome back to ringside. I must say that first round, Casimero 
actually demonstrated why he is in this ring. Now, stay over there. Well, round number two scheduled for clear of the IBF flyweight title fight here at the Nasrek Arena. Coming to you live on SABC2, courtesy of SABC Sport and Bronco Sports Productions. Casimero from Wild Potter, good Potter's got a beak up a card, this young man. He's a moving target. A good overarm right from Cosimero. Staying out of trouble for now. Announce his arrival in the first round with big punches, booming punches. Look at that. Swivels as he throws that punch. Murutim Dalane concentrating on the jab, just throwing it out to keep his man at bay. Now he's throwing that right from the outside as he cannot penetrate him on the inside. Muruti happy to just lead with the right hand sometimes. He is such a mobile opponent. Uh, John Real Casimero. As to the body, a big punch from Maruti to the body. Maruti Mdalan is corner wants speed from him. The card once again from John Real Casimero. That upper cart has been waiting for. The combination from Tolane. Well, the Filipino is not overawed. Now the Filipino looking to drop an overarm left, overarm right rather. Uh, he bounce right again. Shook the young man. Better exchanges from Morutim Dalane in this round. Morutim Dalane, what a hardened uh, flyweight champion he, he is. I mean, he's definitely built, with all that experience, he's built a lot of resistance. Uh, he's ah. able to withstand whatever power punches other boxers can throw against them. Take a little sum of the action in that round. Yeah, the action really just, as you can see, demonstrated by these pictures. Murutin Dalan are quite happy to step up the pace. Some of Dalana's supporters engaging in Indamu, a traditional Zulu dance, as they try to encourage the men to throw a lot more punches and harder punches and telling blows. Oh, be a couple cuts from the young man from the Philippines. Yeah, no, I mean. Ah. Must not punch yeah. himself. But Referee Morton says your punches, my friend. Yes, uh, booming punches this young man. <laughs> Hope he's not out. <laughs> the 
but uh, the body seems to be taking that punch. Wow. Doesn't it look a little bit like a, uh, a young man in Pacquiao? Oh, big punch from Talane. Yeah, I know. You can see both boxers definitely throwing some huge punches. There you go, Morutin Talane trying to close the distance. And what is done here very well is, is uh, to establish the jab first. And then start to build on his attack from there. Oh, no arm right from the Filipino. Very mobile, the Filipino. That's what I was thinking. Yes, yeah, he's very mobile. And, uh, Look at this referee. When Dalana goes downstairs and hits body punches, he doesn't get warned. That's because he can tell that, that those body punches are going to the body and not and, and not in intended to go below the belt. Yeah, some Talane. Another over. Arm right. Good to the jaw. Turned his head, but this young man is still here. He's going nowhere. Very strong. Talane has probably thrown some of his biggest punches in this round. Wow. It's the battle of the same punches, both of them with looping over arm rights. It's incredible, and I mean, Dalane missed twice with his overarm rise, and his opponent, Casimero, arrived twice with his. So at close quarters here, you can see Casimero quite keen to throw some uppercuts from the right hand, as well as some left hook. He likes to throw short punches from the outside, ah. but he supports that with a lot of speed in terms of how he closes the distance. Well, I couldn't pick up what the referee was trying to say in that corner, and uh, I hope he uh, it's not something serious. He's trying to tell them Talana corner. Now, Dixie, I don't know about you, this fight seems to be still a little bit even for now. Yeah, no, the, the fight is still to be won. Definitely still to be won. Uh, Mdalane is quite happy to... One thing I must, I must applaud Mdalane for is he can be flat-footed, but tonight you can see that he's quite mobile. I think they knew. Uh, what kind of opponent to ex expect the other thing is if you look at his fight plan he's quite happy to cut the ring instead of following Casimero around uh, and the other thing the third thing would be the the, the body punches that Mtalane is selecting you know have been pretty effective uh, I think that he'd be encouraged to go downstairs again just to see if uh, Casimero does really take body punches as a matter of very clever, he draws Talana in. And as he comes in, he jumps at him and throws very good punches. Look at that again. He's trying to, he's trying to make Talana come in. Well, he's got lightning hand speed, this wow. young man. I'm just looking at the variety of punches that he throws as well. I break it on and he throws them from awkward corners. Yes, no, he definitely does. This awkward very, angles, rather. Yes. Very awkward. Uh, he throws those punches that you think he shouldn't be able to throw it from that position, pretty much in the same way that, I mean, you oh! probably did think that way when you were watching Nassim Hamed some years ago. an upper card there on the inside. 
It's a quick reaction that is needed from Casimero. And once again, Dalana gets. Can you see I'm Dalana cast the man. ring? And I mean, look at that now. He's cornered him. Very, very smart. I mean, if you look at the combination that Dalana just threw there, he missed with the left hand on purpose just to make sure Casimero commits to a particular positioning. And then he arrives with the right hand. Another combination driving his man back from Talana. Talana beginning to get the over the upper hand in this fight. Come to the end of round four. Welcome back to ringside here at the Nasrak Expo Center in Johannesburg. Let's have a look at some of the action. There you go, uh, Dallan. It's a looking right hand uh, by the target. Round five. I have to start dominating the fight at the moment. You can see that whatever Dallan can throw, Casimir is quite happy to throw it back. Well, tonight a great deal of action in Johannesburg as uh, Wafana Wafana playing Egypt at the Coca-Cola Park. There's another tournament elsewhere in town. And we are here at the Nasrek Arena. Well, our cameraman nearly landed on his back there. His reactions were really surprising as Mutalane, as I said in the last round, is getting the upper hand in this fight. He has somewhat slowed down Casimero. Wow. Casimero has shown a few things here. No, definitely. I mean, you look at how he doubles up on the left hand. And there he goes again. And, and, and the one thing that um, Dalan is going to have to watch out for is that the points, the points have got to stay home. The points have got to stay home, but it's a tough fight. Jeez, it's no easy fight. Uh, just have a look at uh, who are the upper op uh, opponents in this division. Pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. on it as I said following his man and uh, really cutting the corners well this could this be the end could this be the end yes it is well the young man couldn't take it anymore there's just too much too hard from Talane. Celebration here from Talane. His brother, his elder brother, lifting up him high, rejoicing. And the young man from Lindelani in Durban. This young man 
is not rated in the top 20 in the IBF, but really he showed that he can withstand those big punches. But in the end, definitely it was did. If you look much. at some of the action from uh, the the fight here, you can see that there was seemingly a clash of heads let's see if that was a punch can we look at that from another angle look at that they meet but it is a punch downstairs okay it is a punch downstairs the punch that it, there was no head clash there he's complaining about a head clash but it was actually a left hand downstairs to the body <laughs> a great deal and as we take you back to our ring announcer to give you the time and the decision Brian Mulder referee Earl Morton from New Jersey stops this fight 1 minute 51 in the fifth round for the winner and still the IBF Flyweight champion of the world, Muruti, babyface, Amtalani!